first thing we're going to do is put the flour on the countertop. There are lots of ways to make bread, but I'm going to show you this way. Uh, it's kind of a fun variation to make the bread directly on the counter. First thing you do is put the flour in a wide well. You make sure that the well is wide because if you make it tall, then usually the water will spill through the flour and make a mess all over the counter. So after you make a wide well, you put the water in the center. The water that you use should be warm but not really hot. If you can hold your finger in it comfortably for several seconds and it still feels hot, but it doesn't burn your finger, that's how you know it's a good temperature. We're using active dry yeast. This form of yeast is good because it stores for a long time, uh, but it does have to be softened before it will work. So we let it dissolve in the water for a few minutes before we start mixing. While that's dissolving, I'm gonna take the salt and put it on the outside of the well the reason we start with the salt on the outside is because the salt inhibits yeast growth and we want the yeast to get a good head start of growing before we mix in the salt. As soon as you feel the grains become soft, then you can start mixing in the flour. So we're waiting just for a minute for the yeast to soften. Okay, they're starting to get soft now, so, and you can see the, the cloud, water becomes cloudy. So you start moving your fingers around in a circle, slowly incorporating the flour from the outside into the center. On the other hand, I'll use a bench scraper to sort of start mixing the flour into the water as well. As you do that, it becomes thicker, so that if it does leak out, it won't go anywhere because it's pretty thick. So we're showing you the simplest version of French bread with only four ingredients, water, flour, salt, and yeast. You can add other ingredients as well. It changes the properties of the bread just a little bit. It's time to add the salt in now. Depending on how much moisture is in the flour, you may end up needing to add a little bit of extra water. So you feel the consistency of the dough to make sure that you have enough water in the formula so that the dough does not become too heavy and hard. It's easy to add water while you still have loose flour. Once you've got all of the the dry flour mixed into the ball, it's very difficult to add extra water. You can also add a little extra flour if you need to, if you have too much moisture. Even if you go back and forth a little bit, that's okay. You just really want to get that consistency right so that it's not too heavy, but it's not so sticky that you can't knead the flour, knead the dough. It's really hard to hand knead your dough and over mix it. You can certainly over mix in a mixer, but usually when you're doing it by hand, you run out of energy before you run it, over mix the dough. Still need just a little more flour. So the dough should be very soft. But if it's too sticky to work with, then you have to keep adding flour. So to knead the dough, you press it out with your palm, fold it over, and then press it out with your palm again, fold it over, turn it a different direction, and press it out and fold it over. So you can do it quickly if you want or slowly, it doesn't really matter. But that process of kneading by pressing out and folding over is important. 
can also scrape up anything extra on the counter and make sure that all your ingredients get into the dough. Another way to do some kneading, and it's good to do both techniques, is to take the dough and throw it down onto the counter and then fold it over, grab the edge of it, throw it down and fold it over. It stretches the gluten in a little bit different way, and so both of those techniques are good to use. Uh, it speeds up the development of the gluten in the dough. You can see the dough is quite sticky. That's good but we want to just be able to work with it. So if it's still too sticky, we've got to keep adding a little flour. It takes several minutes to knead the dough to get the gluten developed properly. Once it starts feeling very elastic, and it's starting to form a nice smooth ball. You can test to see if the gluten is formed properly by doing what's called the window pane test. To do the window pane test, you take a little piece of dough and you, you uh, stretch it out as thin as you can between your fingers. And then you hold the dough in four places and stretch it out like that. If you get it very thin, as thin as a window, so you can see light through it without it tearing quickly, then that's how the window pane test works. That sample tore very quickly, so we're going to knead for a few more minutes and then try it again. So you can see how stretchy that is now. You can see light through. It still breaks eventually, but it's a much thinner um, piece of dough that you can achieve when you're uh, able to pass the window pane test. So that looked pretty good. So now we're going to do what's called rounding. To round the dough, you, what you're trying to do is stretch the dough around the outside of the ball. So there are two ways to do it. You can stretch and tuck the ends in underneath like this. You can see how it's stretching on the top of the dough. The traditional way to round dough is on the bench top and you trap the edges of the dough between your hands and the table and you push it side to side. So I have to do it quickly to, to uh, get it to not stick to my hands. But the idea is to push the dough and let it stretch. So each time you move it around that table, it's sticking to the table and getting trapped and stretching thinner and thinner. So when it's rounded, it will stand up in a nice, tall, tight circle like that. Then you take the dough, put it into a bowl, and we'll cover it with plastic wrap that's been sprayed with nonstick spray and put it in the proofer. So we're just, we just took the dough out of the proofer. You can see it's about doubled in size. You can check to see if it's doubled in size by pressing gently on the top. Probably need a little flour on my finger. Press gently on the top. And then if the indentation slowly fills back in as it's doing now, that's an indication that we are done proofing. If it stays indented, then it probably is proofed longer than it needed to. Next, what we're going to do is pull the dough out of the bowl. I actually do not want any dusting flour on the surface at this point. I just want it to be a clean surface. We're going to take the dough and round it first. Just gently round it. The stretchiness that it provides by rounding is helpful and it also knocks out big pockets of air. Now I'm going to take it and turn it upside down and I'm just going to use my fingers, separate it apart um, so that I don't smash all the air out of it, but I'm trying to spread it out a little bit into a rectangle. 
So once I've pressed it out with my fingers, I can pick it up and physically stretch it, but I try never to tear the dough, only to stretch. Once it's kind of stretched out, I've got a bit of a something like a rectangle. I'm going to take the top third and fold it down like I would a letter, a business letter. And then I'm going to take the bottom third, and as I pull, I'm going to just stretch it over the top. So again, like folding a business letter. Then I'm going to take my fingers and pinch all the way down the edges, the seam, so that I seal the seam tightly together. Then I roll it across with my knuckles so that it pushes down into the loaf. And then I'm going to take that dough and just roll it out. This amount of dough should be about the length of your baking sheet. And I just keep rolling. I start in the center and work my way to the outside. And when it's about the length of the baking sheet, then that's all I need to do for rolling it out. You want it to be uniform in size so that it's not wide in one spot and narrow in another. You also want to identify the best you can where the seam is. So I think the seam went right along here. I want that part to be on the bottom of the loaf. So I take my sheet pan with parchment on it, put the seam on the bottom, and I put that loaf onto the pan. Now we're going to proof it one more time. Uh, we're, to do that, we're just going to take a little bit of flour and dust the top of it with just a little bit of flour. Just rub it on lightly. That helps prevent it from drying out too much, but allows it to dry just a little bit. That drying out is important for being able to do the slashing later on before we bake it. For the French bread, right before we bake it, you can see that it's doubled in size. We want to put slashes in the top that will help allow expansion of the loaf in the oven so that it won't split along the sides. Okay, so to make the slashing, you want a very sharp blade. I use a razor blade. You want the angle of the razor blade to be very low to the bread so that it's just barely going underneath the surface and you want to move quickly so that you tear as little as possible, but you create the cut that you want. So we're going to make three cuts. We're going to go right along here, and then we're going to overlap an inch and a half, and we're going to go right along here, and then we're going to overlap an inch and a half and go right down here. So we're just going to go into the the dough like that. You can see that they overlap. They went mostly flat into the loaf. You want the opening to happen mostly in the oven, which is why you cut at a low angle to the loaf rather than deep into the loaf. After you cut the loaf, you want to brush it with water. Uh, the water prevents the crust from forming too early and will help create a thinner, crispier crust in the end. You want to be careful not to get too much water on the parchment paper because the water on the parchment paper will make it stick um, and adds fiber to the bread but doesn't taste very good. When you put it in the oven with French bread you want to steam the oven um, for the first 10 minutes of baking. And there's many ways to steam but this is one technique. You can take a water bottle like this and you spray a large stream of water around the bottom and the side of the oven and then quickly close the door. And you'll repeat that about every two minutes.